हेलो गाइस वेलकम टू पाइपिंग इंजीनियर्स सो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी विल टॉक अबाउट द पाइपिंग इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चंस सो गाइस दिस इज द सेवेंथ वीडियो फॉर पाइपिंग इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन सीरीज सो गाइस फॉर मोर वीडियोस एंड अपडेट्स प्लीज लाइक फॉलो एंड सब्सक्राइब टू आवर चैनल सो लेट स्टार्ट टू वीडियो एंड लर्न अबाउट दी पाइपिंग इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन दैट कैन बी आस्ट इन योर इंटरव्यूज so guys the piping interview questions that we, today we will be discussing they can be asked in your any interview if you are going for an interview of an engineer designer or any of the boss so let's start the video so guys uh, the first question today which we are uh, reading is on which type of flanges the use of spiral wand gasket are restricted so this is one of the question that can be asked in in your interview so the gaskets you would know the gaskets we, we use gaskets for to make our joints leak through so the question is in which type of flanges use of spiral wand gasket are restricted so uh, they are restricted asme b16.5 if you refer this uh, document of asme b16.5 it re it does not recommend the use of 150 class rating spiral wand gasket on flanges other than welding weld neck and lapped joint type so in uh, so only on the spiral gasket can be used only on this type of two uh flange joints that is weld neck and lap joint type so moving on to next question on up to what temperature limits the low strength carbon steel bolts uh, should not be used so guys uh, just read this should not be used for flange joints so flange joints using low carbon uh, steel shall not be used above 200 degree celsius or below minus 28 degree celsius so this is the temperature Uh, where we should not use the low strength carbon steel bolts uh, so the next question is how the piping fittings they are classified based on end connections so uh, you know uh, based on end connections we select different types of pipe fit, pipe fittings so this can be asked in your interview what are the piping fittings how they are basic uh, how they are classified on the basis of end connections they can be classified even on pressure ratings and different on material so if someone asks you how how we can classify based on end connection so they can be socket welded fittings Uh, screwed welded fitting screwed ended fittings uh, bay weld end or butt weld fit, uh, fittings spigot socket fittings or buttress end fittings so uh, all these types of uh, fittings basically uh, we use this type of fittings uh, depending upon our size requirement so if our size requirement is let's say uh, around dn40 and less than dn40 so we go we go for this socket weld fittings or screwed fittings uh, if our size is larger we go for this beveled end fittings but uh, all these fittings they are uh, they are basically the different types of end connections of fittings that are used in our piping industry next question is which material is used for temperature above 420 degree celsius so mind this temperature 420 degree uh, 26 degree celsius so this temperature uh, generally uh, in uh, in your refineries or in your steel industry or any of your process industry or chemical industry so the um, one of the highest concentrating temperature uh, the fluid which carries highest temperature is your steam so for uh, carrying the steam we use alloy steels so alloy steel material is used for your uh, te high temperatures you can say or above 426 degree celsius temperature for h high pressure steam and other high temperature carrying things we use this uh, alloy steels generally normal cast steel pipes uh, we don't use there because because there is a crystalline material material uh, of uh, those uh, distortion takes place inside the material and they may have a failure at a later stage of life so in order to avoid all those things alloy steels are used so moving on to next uh, which type of piping material are used for drinking water instrument here etc so uh, drinking water you know uh, it is uh, it is a thing which human we humans use an instrument here again again it's a very delicate thing why because uh, this here is taken by instruments and again uh, if any type of clogging takes place due to any uh, due to any harmful or you would say foreign material uh, that that is being carried away in, uh, through piping into your um, instrument your instrument may uh, get uh, may stop working and similarly the same thing lies for drinking water because again some statutory compliances are to be followed for drinking water so we use galvanized iron so basically why we use galvanized iron because in galvanized iron there are uh, there are less chances or there are no chances of uh, foreign uh, particles of pipe 
that is uh, the pipe erosion doesn't take place so we use galvanized iron for uh, basically for drinking water instrument air and ni lines so that is nitrogen lines nitrogen uh, nitrogen where nitrogen is being poured for your instrument so galvanized pipes are used so guys next question is uh, this is one of the important question that everyone asks what is the difference between you pipes and tubes so uh, pipes and tubes you know they both have different functions based upon the sizes based upon the requirements so what is the basic difference between pipes and tube so you all know that pipes is identified by nominal bore and the thickness is given by schedule number so that you can check the video uh, in our playlist where we have already told uh, how your nominal bore is calculated and how your schedule number is calculated that you will get uh, uh, at in the i link here so based on these two things your uh, pipe and uh, tubes can be classified and other than that how uh, pipes can be classified other than that how to classify tubes tubes are classified based on your od that is outer diameter and its thickness thickness is given by birmingham wire gauge or 1 by 100th of the 1 by 100th in of inch so this is the classification of tubes and pipes are classified by nominal bore and schedule number so this is the basic difference between pipe and tube and what is the difference between a STEMI A153 and 106 grade pipe? So both of these two materials, if you are from piping industry or from process industry, uh, you would be using these materials in day to day life. But what is the main difference between these two pipes and what are the main uses? So ASTMA one ASTMA 53 pipes basically they are used for your utility services like normal services like compressed air, your nitrogen, your service water. And so these type of services uh, when we are when we carry these type of services we use ASTMA 53 material. But but when we when do we use 106 grade B? So 106 grade B is used for uh, steam or high pressure and high temperature services. Basically 106 material. Uh, seamless pipes are made from this material and it is used for high temperature and high pr pressure services. So uh, this is the main difference between your STM-53 and STM-106 grade pipes. Uh, give some examples for occasional loads. So guys you know um, while while calculating our, while calculating the loads um, that, that comes on different structures, different civil uh, civil materials. Uh, we we consider some occasional loads and uh, we consider some permanent loads that uh, that are always there and some occasional loads that comes occasionally as the name suggests so uh, some occasional loads are you can say wind loads because uh, we can have high speed of winds coming in the area so that is wind load your seismic load uh, your your structure or your piping may have may face uh, earthquake so this is seismic loads so pressure due to relief or blow down so if there is a relief valve or there is a blow down in your piping system or in your network so that will also exert a opposite thrust on your piping network or it will it will provide some occasional load and pressure wave generated due to water hammer effects again water hammer uh, if, if your system is not working properly and there is an abnormality in the system so there will be some water hammering effects effects and that will generate extra pressure but again it will be occasionally so all these four things uh, are examples are few of the examples of occasional load there may be many other examples so moving on to next guy uh, uh, normally where do we use eccentric reducers and concentric reducers so guys this type, these are two types of reducers uh, that we normally use and again uh, to know what these reducers do and how they work we have prepared a video and you will get the link here in i box you can watch that video also for more update on eccentric and concentric reducers so guys eccentric reducers uh, uh, is basically one of the most uh, um, basic use of centric reducer is we use centric reduction in, is in pump suction to avoid cavitation and to maintain elevation uh, BOP in rack so whenever we want to maintain the same BOP in pipe rack whenever there is a laying in pipe rack we use a centric reducer and again uh, to minim to to eliminate the air particles air bubbles entrapped in pump suction we use eccentric reducers next is concentric reducers concentric reducers they are used guys in pump discharge and in vertical pipelines so we use centric reducers there so next question is from which side of pipe will you take a branch connection if you are a designer if you are a fitter if you are from construction industry so you should know from which pipe and you want to take a tap or you want to take a branch connection so guys in case in case of fluids uh, when when fluid is gas uh, air or steam and cryogenic services we use top side <laughs> while in case of water 
uh, uh, or, or you can say liquid we take the connection from bottom side so uh, you can say why in water we don't take uh, the tapping from uh, up up upside uh, you can take it from upside but uh, at a later stages there may be chances of air, tra air entrapment and uh, there may be problem in the network so uh, in in that due to uh, due to, to eliminate that thing we go for this uh, tapping from bottom side in case, case of fluid and from other fluids like air and steam we take it from top side next is uh, what is the minimum thickness of cs pipe that requires stress relieving to be done as per 31.3 so there is a clause mentioned in SB, smeb 13.1.3 so to uh, on which thickness minimum thickness that we have to do the stress relieving so the answer is 19.5 mm so if you are going for a stress relieving job so this is one of the basic question anyone can ask you while welding of a pipe trunnion to pipe reinforcement pad you have to put a hole or leave some portion in welding wire so you would have seen that uh, even we weld a pipe trunnion with the re reinforcement pad we uh, a rear reinforcement pad we provide a, a hole there so okay uh, even designers also provide that hole so the main reason for providing that hole is venting of hot gases which may get generated due to welding so this venting is necessary as it may cause uneven heating of the surface and eventually it may cause failure so this is a part of uh, this is this is tool like uh, to eradicate or to eliminate the welding defect that is hmm, that is the entrapment of hot gas this type of uh, hole is provided next question is up to what temperature limits the low strength carbon steel bolt should not should not be used for flange joints so the answer is flange joints using low carbon steel shall not be used about 200 degrees celsius or below minus 28 degrees celsius so guys uh, these are of the few questions that uh, today we have read thank you for watching the videos so for more videos and updates please like follow and subscribe to our channel thank you guys